Bob, look, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and, and the obvious are there, the, the synergies, but I think there's, there's, a, there's a bigger opportunity for us to close that demand supply gap. And, and you know, you've got, we're both in each other's sand patch, as I call it, spending capital, and, and you could say, well, we could, we could probably allocate this capital differently. Uh, we could probably de uh, devote some of the capital to getting the infrastructure right so you can get the material out a, a bit quicker. Uh, and it's, there's, there's a whole range of, of that type of activity that's duplicated that you take out of, the, of both operations. And that's, that's for starters. And then once you start to get your supply chain moving, then uh, clearly you can then create some other opportunities for your, your marketing activities. Maris, what are the synergies? How, how do you quantify them? Gosh, uh, Bob, we, um, we share joint ventures. We operate next to each other. We operate in the same geographical spaces. If I look at the Pilbara, the Bowen Basin, the Hunter Valley, um, some parts of the Copper Belt in the um, southern United States, uh, our operations in Chile and joint venture, the proximity of our diamond mines in Canada, um, you know, I, I can almost go on all day when I talk about the overlap and the synergy potential between these two sets of assets. But the Rio Tinto people say, look, if you had a bid up bit higher, we might have recommended it, but you didn't do that. If it's so good, why didn't you make the high bid? Well, we, we think that we've, we've created the value bid now and it's a, it's a relative value bid that's on the table or it's a conditional relative value bid. And I, could, I probably could run a different argument with uh, petroleum running pretty strongly at the moment that probably it's overpriced. <laughs> so, uh... Marius, what's the timetable for this bid? Um, what, what happens next uh, um, and what, how do you see that going forward? Yeah. Um, such a long timetable, um, but one that is essentially unchanged from you know, our initial communication early on in this year. We believe that the important work that we've got to put in with the regulators, particularly here in Australia and in, uh, in Europe, will take us uh, well into the fourth quarter of this uh, uh, calendar year. Then we've got under the uh, UK um, timetable that we're running the deal on, about 28 days to post offer documentation, post completion of the uh, antitrust work, so about a month. And then you've got another two-month process um, in, in order to complete the, uh, the transaction. So about three months um, after the, um, the, um, the antitrust clearances have been obtained. And so some, somewhere uh, in the early part of next year. What if the European Commission says you can buy Rio Tinto, but only if you sell vast amounts of it? Um, what would you do in that situation? Well, I think Don has alluded to the fact that this is a relative value deal. It's the relative value of the two companies, plus then the increment that you can get from all of this overlap reduction and acceleration of volume. We feel very confident that our arguments about extra volume out of the combination, that that is a very sound one. But clearly, should we, uh, we, we not be able to get the... Um, uh, the synergies and the extra volume out of the combination because of uh, some of these issues, we'll, we'll have to think again. Uh, and finally, to either of you, um, um, if you acquire Rio Tinto, will BHP, well, the com combined company, better pay higher dividends because you'll better amortise your capital expenditure differently? You know, our first objective is always to to try and invest more money in our business. We started off this conversation today by talking about that long run, strong market. I think one of the very attractive opportunities for this um, combination is that we should be able, in the combination of the portfolio, invest our money better. But we'd also like to invest more of it to get more product on the table. But we've had a long standing policy of returning all surplus cap, uh, cash in the form of dividends and in terms of, uh, of buybacks and, and, and that, that would obviously continue. There's no hesitation to reward the shareholders and I think our actions over the last five or six years, Bob, have, have proven that and you know, going forward there'll be no change in, in that policy. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Marius. Thank you.